Hi, welcome back. In this video, I thought I would highlight some of the steps that I take when fishing a new lake or body of water for the first time. This might help you if you're looking to start fishing or if you're intimidated with approaching a new lake to fish. These tips will primarily target the bass category of fish, which includes largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, rock bass, and even some of the panfish like sunnies and crappies. These tips could also apply to some of the larger fish like pickerel and pike as well. Now, I'll be scouting out this new lake that I've never fished before, and it's located up in the hills of Albany County, which is located in upstate New York. New York is blessed with over 7,000 lakes, ponds, and reservoirs, so there's plenty of places I haven't fished yet. The first thing I do is analyze the lake using Google Maps. What I'm basically looking for is how the shoreline access looks. Since I'll be walking around the lake and fishing from the shoreline, I have to make sure there are areas where I'll be able to walk around the lake. A majority of these lakes have lake houses around the lake, and those are people's properties, so definitely cannot be fishing on private property. Like for example, on this lake, if I switch to satellite view, it will show all of the houses bordering the lake. And you can see that most of this side of the lake has houses, so it would be impossible to fish from this side from the shoreline. There are a couple of stretches of areas where there are no houses here, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was land owned by some of these folks and there probably are the no trespassing signs there too. So let's keep looking around this lake and see what else we can find. Fortunately for this lake, there's a state park on the opposite side of the lake. State parks are great because they give you more access to the lake because it's public property rather than private property. You can see here there are a couple of roads in the park, so that's very beneficial. So now we know how to access this lake, let's talk about what bait to use. I'm a big fan of plastic worms because it allows you to mimic various types of food that these fish eat, like worms, small bait fish, and crayfish. The color of the worm is something that can seem confusing because there are so many different colors of plastic worm out there. It really boils down to the conditions in which you are fishing. If the lake has clear water, and or it's a sunny day with very little wind breaking the surface of the water, you'll want to use something more natural, like a green pumpkin with flakes or watermelon color. This is because in clearer conditions, these fish can see more details and they might get spooked with a darker color. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, if the water clarity is murky or muddy and or it's a cloudy day with rain or wind, a darker color worm would work better because the fish will only be able to see the outline of the bait since in these conditions the clarity is significantly less so as a result the darker color would trigger a reaction bite more than a natural color like green. Here's a handy chart that you can reference on what bait color to use for the conditions at hand. I'll leave a link to this chart in the description of the video. So now let's take a drive to the lake and do some fishing. When I left my house on this day it was really nice conditions and the sun was out, but as I got closer to the lake, it started clouding up and it began to drizzle rain. It just goes to show how unpredictable the weather can be in different elevations. After parking and while I was walking from my car, I had noticed this small feeder stream that was emptying out into the lake. These are important features to keep in mind because these feeder streams carry fresh water and nutrients to the lake that the fish thrive off of. Typically fish will hang out where these streams empty into the lake because it's easy food for the fish. After trekking down a bit and reaching the shoreline, I looked at the conditions of the water clarity and saw that it was clear water. Even though it's cloudy and raining a bit, I could still see quite a bit of detail below the surface of the water. So that gave me a hint that using a natural color like green with red and silver flakes, which mimics some of the small bait fish in this lake, would be a good worm to use. I hooked the worm in the middle like this, which is called Wacky Rig. 
There are many ways to hook these plastic worms. This one just happens to be my favorite. When casting, I generally cast in every angle possible before moving to a different area of the lake. So it's kind of like a spanning technique where you try to cover as much as you can in the area that you're standing. Within the first three casts, I was able to snag a nice rock bass. Here's the clip of that. Oh wow, this is a massive rock bass. Holy cow, look at the size of this thing. I've caught some big rock bass in my life, but this one is pretty big. All right, there he goes. After this rock bass, I didn't catch anything in the next few casts, so I decided to walk down a bit when I noticed some fish splashing on the surface of the water. Within a couple of casts, I was able to get my next fish. Here's the clip of that. Lost my worm. Yeah. This time we got a large mouth. Okay. Nice little one. See you later, buddy. As mentioned in the clip, when the fish was jumping as I was reeling it in, the plastic worm kicked off and I lost it in the water. After looking through my tackle bag, I realized that the worm I had just lost was my last green colored worm, so I had to switch up the color. I decided to use one of my favorite colors, which is the June Bug. It's essentially a darker purple color with flakes. I knew I would have to slow up the presentation of the worm because the water clarity was pretty good and these fish would be hesitant to bite a darker colored worm. After moving down the shoreline some more, I caught my next fish of the day. Here's the clip of that. There's a hit. Come on. Oh man, that's a giant rock bass. These rock bass are huge in this lake. Look at the size of this thing. There we go. Thanks for the fight, buddy. You fought good. All in all, it was a pretty good day of fishing. I was only out there for less than an hour and I got three good fish. I hope this video helps you out. I should mention that these fishing tips are just things I've learned throughout the many years of fishing to help catch more fish. When it comes to fishing, there are no guarantees and there could be days where the fish are just not interested in anything you're using. Don't give up, just keep on trying different lures and baits as well as different techniques and learn what gets those fish to bite. Thanks for watching and do consider subscribing to the channel because we'll be doing more adventures and stuff.